All right, nice to have you all. Welcome. It's lecture 15, and we will work, continue our work with the radial equation in view of solving the hydrogen atom. So let's see where we are from last time. Yes, so central potentials, hydrogen atom, using the radial equation. So, are we complete? I think so. If you don't mind sliding a little bit so that we're not really help us with the door. Thank you. So what's the mood today? Yeah, yeah that's the mood. Take a look at <laughs> Okay. Yes, that's the mood today. So we've done we went into 3D on the mechanics in 3D. So we will continue to use some of the stuff we did in 1D and 3D, but there's a lot of interesting stuff in 3D. And we leave our own world in 3D, or 4D if you like, if we include time, yeah? So, a lot of interesting stuff like degeneracy and stuff like that take place in 3D. Without um, wasting time, let's get straight to what we want to do, since we have all these reminders and things like that. We have our Hamiltonian which can be expressed expressed in 3D using spherical coordinates. We prefer spherical coordinates where there is spherical symmetry, where stuff is only changing by one variable distance from an origin. For instance, the electron of, an, of a hydrogen atom is changing only in terms of the distance from the center due to its attraction to the what? Proton. Yeah? Here is electron, here is proton. If it is at n equals one energy level, ground state, it stays there. Right? You excite it, where next? Still bound, but higher, but still. And then you ionize free. <laughs> yeah. So bound solutions will be just radial. That's why our radial equation, spherical coordinates, is good. So when I say radial, then it means that. And when we excite it, it gets into a few orbits still around. And what might change then would be not just r, but also theta and phi, right? Because you can have more probability of being here than of being there. And it's like that again. So that's why this is cool. And next week we will get deeply into angular momentum. So we've prepared ourselves for it. Quick exercise. Is there any commutation that we did last right there? Can you see anything that resembles the commutation we did last time? What commutation did we do last time explicitly as a class exercise? X P sub Y. P sub Y X. Do you see anything similar? Anybody? Anything deceptively similar then? Sorry, Millie? This one? Yeah, so x d d y. So if you put negative i h bar, then d d y is actually p sub y. But it's, like I said, it's deceptively similar. It is x p sub y minus, what should it be if it were commutation? Should be minus d d y. Right, so it should be minus p sub y x. It is not exactly the commutation, but it sets us up. Because if it were the commutation of xpy minus, which is xpy minus pyx, then this should be zero, right? But since it is not, it's something else interesting. 
which we will continue to work out from next week. But it at least picks up the step we had prepared ourselves for last time. So we'll be calculating angular momenta, components of angular momentum using commutation relations that we know, and there will be a lot of it in Cartesian coordinate, also in spherical coordinate. Another interesting thing, you can look, take a look at your notes from last time, what we did on the board. What can you say about this full expression for angular momentum in spherical coordinates compared to the angular equation we derived explicitly on the board or on the screen last time. <laughs> it's the same. Aha, Carter. <laughs> At least in terms of theta and phi. And that is why that separation constant was chosen. See, he told you he will tell you later, and I just said, okay, I will tell you. And I did L squared psi, and I claimed that that is equal to L into L plus one H bar squared. So it turns out that this guy, the L squared operator, gives us the radio, the angular part of our equation. And we can use it to solve even the hydrogen atom, the angular part. So it's so connected that I decided to point out that's where this is coming from. The way we do it is what <laughs> one of my former professors here in Creighton University called, he's late now, that's Robert Kennedy, Bob Kennedy. So he used to call it, let's use future insight. No, future hindsight. <laughs> What do you think future hindsight means? He calls it future hindsight. It's hindsight, but future. <laughs> we know where we want to go and we know what to do, so we fix it now and get ready. So, this is where we want to go, and so we put it now by future hindsight and we serve our time. Just like I'm going to ask you to use future hindsight at various steps when we get there. So, um, as hinted here, Next week, we will do that. We will calculate all that explicitly. So get ready. So quantum numbers, we can motivate this. Already you begin to see the L coming out of L squared. And the L is the angular momentum eigenvalue. So eigenvalues are the angular momentum, and they turn out to be limited to only integers. And certain numbers and because of that limitation to integers that is quantization that means angular momentum is quantized comes out of the math nice then we will get principal quantum number we'll get magnetic quantum number all coming out of the math and when you put that and calculate you get numbers that fit with experiments that explain stuff that couldn't be explained either too so that's really cool we'll be back to this slide today so, yeah, I'm going to turn what I want to do with you on the board into like an exercise. We want to get an equation that is nice for us to solve for the hydrogen atom. For the hydrogen atom, all we we'll need to do is put the correct V. But we want to put it in a form that really looks like the time-independent Schrodinger equation in coordinate, in radial coordinate R and in a way that we can just apply known solution. A known solution that will apply nicely is already Laguerre and Yeah. So let's go back to where we were. So this is the exercise I want to do now. Rearrange our radial equation obtained on Tuesday to get the, this equation. That's what we want to do now, okay? <clears throat> let's do it together. The kind of thing that makes stuff very transparent. Any questions so far? <clears throat> so, what was our radial equation? I can say, get what? TIS, time independent Schrodinger equation, 
in R. For hit R. So that's what we want to do. So, of course, starting point is radial equation with separation constant. Radial equation we had last time <coughs> was something like 1 over r, yeah, partial, partial r, r squared, dr, dr, yeah, <coughs> and what was, what was next? P minus 2m r squared over h bar, is that correct? h bar squared, v minus e equals l into l plus 1. Is that correct? Should be. We want to start from where we were. Please check it for me. And we knew that this was equal to negative of this other separation <laughs> constant for the radial part. And we want things to be transparent. Any issue with it, please? Okay. So, our next step, remember where we want to go. We want to get that equation that is nice, looking exactly like time-independent Schrodinger equation, but just with radial, and then we apply the solution. So, number two... What might we do to make it begin to look like radial or time-independent Schrodinger equation? It's going to be like going back and forth. It's something we've done opposite previously to get the separation constant. I can give another hint. If we, if we multiply by something, this first term will begin to look like the first part of the time-independent Schrodinger equation. What might we multiply it by? Correct. So that's the great step. <laughs> so times negative h bar squared over 2mr. 2mr squared. Yeah. So do that. And we get 1 over r d dr r squared. Yeah. I should actually put it right away. So we get negative h bar squared 2mr squared. Then 1 over r, d dr, r squared, d r by dr. What happens here? It goes away, right? h bar squared. Yeah, because it's negative. So plus um, v minus e, yeah, equals negative l into l plus 1 h bar squared over 2 n r squared. Check it. Is it okay? We can actually rearrange then so that it becomes negative h bar squared. I can just make it the third step so that we have we go fast. 3, I'll say times r, then rearrange. Rearrange. So go ahead and do yours. I do mine and we we'll see what we get. Negative h bar squared over 2 m r squared. I've multiplied everything by r, so I will get d dr into r squared, dr dr, let me see. To rearrange, I would like to keep my v, so plus v, this chunk will be positive, plus l into l plus 1, h bar squared, 2mr squared. And I had said we multiply by r. So that is what got rid of that r. So we can put our r right there. Equals. I kept v here for a reason I will tell shortly. 
and there is negative e here, so I can send it the other way. And I don't want to forget my r. So let's check our work. <coughs> Happy? Did you get that? You need to check that you yourself got it so that. People are happy. Okay. So, again, where we are heading to is to get something that looks like Schrodinger equation time. So, this already begins to look like it. This looks like it. But this can be made easier, made nicer. That's what we want to do. So that it will be easy. If we can turn this into, instead of having to take derivative with this guy, we turn it in this way that all this chunk, in fact, the whole of this becomes maybe one second order, so d squared something. Then it will be easy to solve. That's what we want to do next. This is step four. Define, okay? Or substitute. What, what's the word we should use if we rename variables? Substitute. Substitute, yeah. Which other word will work? Replace. Sorry? Replace. Re redefine or something like that. Okay, you get the idea. So, okay. Sorry, it was not a mathematical step, so nobody gets to that. <laughs> so let's say you, we define a U to be little, little r times r, which implies that, yeah, r, r equals u. It doesn't want me to be fast. Our aim is to replace this chunk here with something that is just a single term for easy solution. That's the aim. And to do that, there is a dr by dr. So let's start. Using this redefinition, please do for me dr dr. What do we get? So that's another way. I like to write it explicitly so that I don't forget my stuff. What I'm doing, so I like to write it that way. So what do we get? Dr by dr. Yeah. So what is it? Anybody? Negative u over r squared. Sorry. Negative u over r squared. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then, how about you take a look and say, hang on. What about du by the r? What will that give us? Yeah? So that's clear. What about du by dr? So I'm saying du dr. What will it give? Because you know what? U is in terms of R, what will that be? Just kind of Big R. R. Yeah, so you're checking things nicely. So you take a good look. You say, huh, I have found DU by the R, sorry, DR by DR in terms of U. What else might we do to get there? Any idea? If you put that in, then the R's cancel. Sorry? The R's, the R squared will cancel. If you yeah, if you in, put it where? In for R, DR, DR, DR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, take a look. DR by the R gives us something that looks nice. Yeah. And we look here. R squared by the R will give us what? So R squared of, we have dr by dr. Just negative u. Right, okay. And now finally, what is d dr by this? Sorry? So 
So think of DDR of all this. So go for it. Class exercise. I'm going around. Each person should be able to do this. Then we know. Keep track of it. So everybody, group work, do it. We want that equals what? So group work. Because then it makes things transparent. Yeah? Yeah. Anyone ready? If you are ready, you call me. Wait, no. So if you are ready, you let me check your work and compare with mine. Okay. So where is that one there? Right. Very good. So we Going that direction, that's good direction. Very good. So that's good check. Okay. All right. So, from what I've seen people do, you need to check this well. Check this, dr by dr. Because what did we say, if we look at it very well, look, r equals u, so there are two terms. So, correct yourself. Then. So there's a missing term there. Is it clear now why I like to write the two of them? Because <laughs> if you don't, you're going to make that mistake. I just saw all through. So I'm saying that R has two terms. So there's a missing term there. What are the two terms of R? R little r rest to negative one and u. So you have to do it. None is a constant. Does that make sense? I have this. <laughs> I reduce the product. U is not a constant. A little r is not a constant. So correct. Yeah? So there has to be another term there. Before we get to this. Everybody. <laughs> and if you are ready, you call me to check so that I compare with my work. Yes. Yeah, because U is R U. Excellent. That's what I got. Yep. <laughs> wait, but wait, wait. If you plug in R U, then wouldn't you just have R? Have the capital R. Because then the R is against R equals U over R, right? If you are sure, I'm sure you call me and we check our work. I just check, I like what you got. Well, that would be R over. No, actually, it, it is R over R. It's big R over Just for the DR over DR. Yes, because if you get that one right, then the next step becomes is negative. There are two terms. Yeah, U over R squared minus U over R plus U over R. Nice. You see why we needed to correct it, right? There were two terms. So. When you do capital R, 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 R,
and it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're fine. Mm -hmm. Good job. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> it's good to check. <laughs> really sweet. So Who else has it? I yes. think I got it. Yes. Is this the other term? That's the first term. So, my okay. your first term, yeah, it's the same. Negative U over R squared, mm -hmm. and then. So. Did you get DU one. by the R? Mm -hmm. I got so DR over R. R. And I don't know why. I got the R over R squared. First part, you get negative DU. So, you've got. Plus, and then your R squared. R squared. Why would it be R over R squared? I got you over R squared. So, I did it up to. Well, yeah, I don't need to add in the derivative. So, also, this becomes 2R, right? Like this yeah, so it's. Yeah. So, you got to think about it after this first kept this constant. So, I start with R, then give you the R. Okay, but I would do this. And then, this is the plus. Plus. Same thing over here. I think R is constant. U is constant. And I think the derivative would just have to be. Yeah. And then I get R. See this um, yes. minus. I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> exactly. So I get you in both. But I don't yes. see you are you. I don't see you are you. Well, because I turned you into. No, R. but it's. What would you turn again? You you equals R. Because we want to keep things in terms of we want to keep our right hand side in terms of you. Make sense? Yeah. So we've got. Okay, let's finish it off together. What is this? Yeah, I'm glad we're we doing it this way. So, you've got R to the negative 1 times U. Okay? Let's do it together. So, DR, that's what R is. So, DR by DR, let me be very explicit, is D, DR, R to the negative 1. Yeah. Do we agree? Plus okay. Which is equal D to R, is R to the negative one D U D R. Yeah. Plus, yeah, we've kept R to the negative one constant and we differentiated with respect to U. Plus, I know it will turn to positive. Okay. If you like u constant and then dr to the negative one dr which gives me r to the negative one du dr minus you see it now yeah minus comes here so dx to the n dx is n x to n minus one so minus one minus one is minus two yeah and there is our u there for the r square. Is that clear now? <laughs> yes, people are happy now. That's what I got. So dr by dr feeds back. Can we do it? Can we simplify it further? Does du dr equal r? Du. Does that equal big R? Yeah. Mm, so no, because each time you have a product. Mm. Good question. So U is R times little mm -hmm. r. Each time there's a product, so there will be a, a double two terms. Oh. Okay. Yes. That's really the reason we want to be so explicit. Good question. Any other one? Yeah. So R is not a constant. R is not a constant. Good. <laughs> I'm so happy, yeah. R is not a constant. We want R to be a function of the position. In other words, R, I see what you guys really wanted to do. I, <laughs> this is sweet. You wanted to put the thing, change. so here, I, here is me appreciating what you were trying to do. You wanted the change in position to be picked up by little r so that your u will be constant. Is that not what you were trying to do? Yeah. You wanted one part to be constant, the other part to vary. Both are varying. Yes. I appreciate what you were trying to do. 
<laughs> yes, makes perfect sense to me now. Let's simplify this. Is it okay to write it as R? So check this for me. DU DR minus U all divided by R squared. All this. Okay. All this divided by R squared. Check for me. Is it okay to do that? Yes. Because I then, so this is one over R. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So finally, yeah, after this nice exercise, we just got dr by dr as this expression. R du dr minus u all over r squared. Ha ha, here is why. See it here. And we then go fast. Because what is in the bracket is r squared dr by dr. So that this bracket term is just this term. R du dr minus, did I lose my u? Yes, there's a u there. So R, D, U, D, R, that's the U there, that's it, over R squared, yeah. Are we together? Good. So I'm saying that we just got what is inside the bracket easily. By having this term over R squared, it means that R squared DR by the R is just what is in the square bracket. Is that correct? So let's proceed. Therefore, another exercise, just to check that people are really together, dr squared, dr, r, then equals what? I can help you so that this is just one more step to what we are looking for. dr into r du by dr minus u. You agree that that is what it is? Yeah, because of the R squared then. Yeah, R squared. So now you are left with just taking derivative of those two terms and telling me what it is. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's sweet when you get it right. Like Alan was so happy. Was, yep. <laughs> I wanted to enjoy it too. <laughs> yeah, so. Can do it as a group. Take the take the product. So you'll get dr over dr times du dr. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Well, the terms du dr yeah. squared. Uh, times r. Don't worry about the dr. You should get three terms in total. You should get the product. You take the product rule of this R. Anyone ready? So that. Yes. Let me. I like to have my solution when I'm checking your solution. And then the next term we just cancel the Sometimes you write it differently, but it is correct. This, oh, yeah, which is easy to solve in you, right? Oh. You, so you are there. there. <laughs> <laughs> which is now easy to solve in you. So you're going to be used to sort of plugging that with the yeah. 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 yeah, here's where I got none of Yeah, don't kick it now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, you're going to take this derivative and all this inside your stuff here. You can't, it's not like an explosive solve. Yeah, I'm doing it. Oh, okay, yeah. Just call me when you're ready. What's that? Back into itself, yeah. Call me when you're ready. I don't want to feel threatening. I do uh, what was yeah. it? Okay. Then you do it. Okay. Yes. You are like checking it, but we want it to be expressed in you. Stays constant. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.
Okay. That group body? Uh, R, E okay. squared, U over D, R squared. R, E squared, U over D, R. No, this R right here. Whenever we plug it in. So are we together? So DDR, RD, okay, let's see if I remember it on the other side. So just to check, we want, what was it? <laughs> okay, help me, DDR, yes, DDR into, we want DDR into what? R squared, right? D R by D R, and we said that this guy was what? Please, what was this? Uh, it was D D R. Um, was it D U? It was R D U D R. Yeah, so it was R D U D R. Yes. Or minus U. D U D R. Minus you. Very good. So this will then be. Sometimes I write, <laughs> it doesn't show. So let's do the same thing. So we put R constant and we differentiate with respect to R. So it becomes d squared u dr squared for this first term with R constant minus, yeah, and now. What do we have? Uh, you have to do the product rule in the first the term. So we've got this one and this one, right? And so the next will be du, yeah, um, dr, kept constant, yeah? And we take d dr, so dr dr, right? Um, I Minus, yeah, I'm doing this Term, this double term, look at it, watch it. Yeah. I've got R. I keep my R constant. I take derivative with respect to this term and I get this. Then I move on. Yeah. Okay. So I see what you mean. I add. So then do D U D R constant D little R D little. Then minus du so this is one so that's what you all got which is good so without further ado okay and what was our point what did we have we had negative eight bar squared over two m r squared then this chunk right so it is now r d squared u d r squared. What else? I can check. We just got that one. Okay. So v plus that. V plus l into l plus 1 hit bar squared over 2 mr squared, and we don't forget our r, okay? And I'm going to skip, do fast, so that we save some time. So there's an r there, but what was the change of variable? Whenever there is r, put u over r, is that okay? So let's just do that quickly. So u over r, and that was equal to what? I go back, that was equal to e, R. And whatever there is R, we put U over little R. So E U over little R. And again, without further ado, if we multiply everything by little R, what do we get? <laughs> little, you know why we do that? Yeah, just to get rid of some R's and get a nice Schrodinger equation. We get anybody? 2m, you see that that little r and this one are squared, so they cancel, and then d squared u dr squared 
plus what? All the same. V, all that stuff, I agree. <laughs> H bar squared over 2m to the yes, over 2mr squared. Because this cancels this, and then there is a u right there. Equals e, which is what we wanted to show in order to solve. So no magic, we're almost there. So all it takes now is to, since I like to save time, to say that our V, what is our V? Just put in our V there and with V equals negative Z e squared to the four pi epsilon naught R. So V is the function only of R. Where is this coming from? Quick one. Where is this V coming from? Is that C effect, V effective? I'm sorry? Is that V effective? It's not V effective. It is V, first of all, before we get V effective. Since you said it, let me do a V effective then. So, this becomes... V effective. Oh, I see It picks up a term here that is proportional to what is called the centripetal. Yeah. But it's a little bit fictitious. It's what attracts it partly to the center. So all we need is to write the Coulomb force that is providing the potential energy. Potential energy, mechanical potential energy is MGH. But electrical potential energy is what? V electrical. Sorry about the term. Usually, U electrical is what we call in this class V electrical. So just remember, the book told you that. So we're talking about electrical potential energy and it's K Q squared over R. It's energy. So over R. Q squared. If it were just the potential, it would be KQ over R. Because the potential is created by any charged object. I only need to be charged to have a potential, an electric potential. So I need only one source charge. So KQ over R for the electric potential. But for energy, it is an interaction between two charged objects, or between a charged object and an uncharged object. Yeah. And then the other object gets induced charge, and so both become charge. Yeah. So in this case, the interaction is between what and what? I want to connect with the physics. An electron, electron and a proton. Because you could be so caught up with the math that you forget, <laughs> you forget the physics. It does happen. <laughs> so that's where the Q comes from. So by the time we write Z E squared, over 4 pi epsilon naught r, we will mean that if there are 10 electrons, 10 appear there. 10 electrons with 10 protons. That's, so if we solve for hydrogen with one electron, hydrogen atom with one electron and one proton, then Z is one. That's what we want to do. Okay, we're ready. So where is 4 pi epsilon naught coming from? That's a K right there. Just reminding you of your general physics. All right, one minute break and we plunge into the solution with Laguerre polynomials. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Tell me when you want us to continue. <laughs> Anybody wants to tweet? Oh, Alan is tweeting. <laughs> Tell that twice you got the classwork correct. <laughs> yes. Send it, send it, send it. <laughs> okay, welcome back. Did I give enough time for questions? I like your questions. I remember somebody asked, is that V effective? Yeah. Or not and now we because that's a good exam short short answer question <laughs> did you hear what I just said <laughs> write down V effective in view of the central potentials for the time independent Schrodinger equation in radial coordinate for central potentials <laughs> yes that's a great question <laughs> all right so why we needed to do that is that solutions have been found to equations like this long before quantum mechanics. What kind of differential equation is this? Is it linear or non-linear? This one. Is it linear or non-linear? It's linear in U. What order is it? Second order linear in U and the salt. Yeah? It's in the same family as which one that we've already solved? Harmonic oscillator. So, series solution. The only thing different then is how to handle this effective potential energy. That's all. And instead of Pyramid polynomials, we will use Laguerre polynomials because it can handle this extra expression, series solution. So same thing we did before, put in the potential energy right there. This is solved as for 1D harmonic oscillator. So you can already guess the solution. Let's see how much we remember from it <laughs> before we write it down. Ah, where is my... I've dropped it somewhere, but that's okay. So, two things that we need to do. Two limits. Which limit? Infinity and towards zero. And we can guess the solution already. But, to make things tidy, and in view of what we expect of the energy, we can rewrite these constants so that it's really easy to handle the expression, the power series. So here is how we rewrite the constant. A replaces 2m over h bar, z e squared over 4 pi epsilon, and then kappa squared. This is a bit different from the way the book does it, so I'm happy. <laughs> that I have it differently, and you can compare. We end up with the same solution. Yeah. I actually like the book's own as well. So the book's own is good, and this one is good too. So rewriting it that way, does it really look plausible? Anybody wants to check? Assignment? <laughs> check it. <laughs> does it look plausible? I checked it again, it worked. And if you want to check, remember that there is 2m over h bar squared in front of a. And the idea is to get rid of what was in front of this guy because it's the ankle function to be solved. So if we go backwards, you will see how that is done <clears throat> to make it a bit more plausible. 
Look, you rewrite and get A equals, so H bar squared 2ME picks up what should have been here, yeah? So you are basically multiplying, watch me, I will be brief. You are basically multiplying everything by what we've already done before. You're multiplying again by 2ME over h bar squared. That's how you got rid of this and left this door. That's why the A term starts with 2ME over h bar squared. Is that okay? So that was the whole thing. And you clean it up and put that A right there. Kappa is so that you can solve it nicely in terms of a kappa or k that could be upstairs in your exponential for r going to infinity. Is that okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so, we're almost there. 